briefly introduce the vlog that you've been watching thus far. I was hoping that this could be a cozy winter kind of follow me around for a week as I read Journal of a Solitude by Mae Sarton. This is a book that I picked up recently that I have really been excited to read. This book is a published journal that the author Mae Sarton kept for a time when she was living on her own in a cottage in Connecticut, uh, working on her writing, sort of contending with the writing life. It's definitely shaping up to be what I had hoped it would be, which is very sort of introspective, self-examining look at the life and mind of a writer and some of the mental and emotional pitfalls that come with it. I got my copy pre-owned and so the previous owner of this book had already annotated some sections and I myself have definitely been annotating lines and sometimes even whole pages that I feel are very poignant or relevant and it's been fun to see both sets of annotations sort of commingling on the page. Just to give you an example. I also love that the previous owner left their bookmark in here and they were using what looks like some kind of library card or a card that seems to track when a library book would need to be returned but at the very bottom it says Hennepin County Library and I went ahead and just looked that up Hennepin County to see where that might be and I think it's somewhere out in the Midwest so this little book has traveled uh, kind of far to be in my hands and I'm grateful for it. But yeah, I kind of need to get going here. I need to head out the door and head on over to work. And as I look out the window now, it looks like it's snowing. So I, I think I need to wear a warmer coat than I was planning to. But like I said, this vlog will be sort of a follow me around for the week uh, as I'm reading this and I hope you enjoy. Sunday morning and I'm about to head out to meet up with a friend in DC to go to a bookish cafe uh, that neither of us have been to before so I'm excited for that. Yesterday, Saturday ended up being kind of, I'll call it a rest day. I did a lot of resting which was overall very much needed but I woke up pretty early this morning actually before any of the alarms that I had set went off which in some ways was kind of nice and I picked up Journal of a Solitude and just started reading uh, as the sun was coming up, which was lovely. Really still enjoying Journal of a Solitude. I'm definitely underlining quite a few things and I think I definitely want to go back again at some point in my life and, and reread this, if not periodically, just kind of dip in and, and see what parts I had underlined because I think a lot of them are pretty poignant. If there's a chance to, later in this vlog I will definitely share a quote or two that I've underlined that I think is poignant. But I'm almost halfway through Journal of a Solitude now and uh, definitely hoping to finish it either today or tomorrow if I can. But the plan for today was to meet up at this coffee shop slash bookstore, uh, read, chit chat, catch up, maybe walk around a little bit. It is supposed to rain, so we'll see how much walking around we end up doing. But uh, yeah, I will take you along with me. It's in a part of DC that I haven't really explored before. It's the Columbia Heights neighborhood, and yeah, I'm, I'm excited. You've got a friend in me. You've got All 
Alrighty, so I wanted to do a check-in here and I feel like the week has kind of gotten away from me. At the beginning of the week I told you that I was halfway through Journal of a Solitude and that I was hoping to finish it in the next day or two. Not really had a chance to read uh, since I did that check-in, but I wanted to share my current thoughts and feelings on the book. So far I'm really enjoying it. It's a very pensive, self-examining kind of book, as one might expect when reading somebody's journal. I think the main part for me that's been so gratifying to experience with this book is to get a glimpse inside the mind of someone who, when they were writing this, were already an established writer, published poet of several volumes, and you definitely still see her wrestling with self-doubt, her own personal struggles with mental health, and just balancing life things. And while I haven't read any other of May Sarton's poetry collections or fiction works, it's still been really gratifying to get this sort of view behind the curtain inside uh, an established writer's writing life and being able to see that it's not all smooth sailing even after you have made a name for yourself and your main form of work and income is writing. I think it's starting to help me break down the facade or the fantasy that I have in my head that established writers or people who've been writing for a long time don't struggle with some of the things that I'm personally, you know, sort of learning to juggle at the moment with my own writing endeavors. And realizing this for me has been liberating instead of debilitating. Realizing that even people who seem to quote unquote have it together don't usually have it together. <laughs> for me, I think in some ways it's been kind of encouraging to actually see that depicted or discussed in a Journal of a Solitude. Something else that's also been resonating deeply with me uh, while reading this is May Sarton discussing the differences of producing poetry versus her fiction work, getting to see that even for her there are ebbs and flows for both of those formats where you'll get into a headspace or a certain stride that has poetry sort of flowing out of your ears, and other times that sort of internal flow dries up. And while it's maddening to kind of have to in some ways wait for it to return. It is a, a cyclical thing that does eventually come back and sort of the, the rush and the joy when it is present. And same thing with fiction. January 7th, quote, I have worked all morning and it is now afternoon to try to make by sheer art and craft an ending to the first stanza of a lyric that shot through my head intact. I should not feel so pressed for time, but I do, and I suppose I always shall. I feel like in the past few years something that I've really had to grapple with and contend with uh, in my own creative life is the balance of time and time management. This consuming sense that can come over me uh, where I just want to do nothing but write, do nothing but create something. But I'm also an adult person that has to do things like go to work and feed myself and shower. Um, you know, like all of those day-to-day -day mundane things of, you know, chores, which is also something that May Sarton has mentioned a couple times in Journal of a Solitude so far, which I find comforting and being able to recognize that sameness in another writer, trying to find the balance in the struggle of maintaining your regular day-to-day -day life and your chores and maintaining your creative life, of also being able to release sort of the pressure that you might put on yourself or others might put on you to sort of maintain the quote-unquote real life uh, expectations um, as opposed to your own creative ones. Not feeling guilty if you don't do that load of laundry or that you don't make a meal for yourself from scratch every night. Being able to find balance between sort of the two worlds, two sets of expectations, um, because I've found that leaning too far into one or the other definitely creates a sense of imbalance and unfulfillment, um, and for me one can't exist without the other. So for me it's definitely been learning to release the sort of internal guilt that I might have about leaving some of my chores undone for a little bit while I focus on my creative work, allowing for moments where I can sort of let myself be consumed by this 
this need to make something, this need to put words onto a page, but also not getting lost in that. Being able to take care of myself and my space and operate in the world as a somewhat functioning adult and maintain a social life where I see friends, I interact with people aside from my cat. Um, <laughs> the quote-unquote real world is where you can find input for your own creative projects, getting to observe the world and people around you, but also getting to connect with people whether they are loved ones or just random strangers. Being able to connect with your current reality, your current space, the current moment of life that you are in, all of which is something that I've definitely been grappling with recently and trying to find what that balance might look like for me. I don't think I've fully found it, but so far this reading experience has kind of lent itself to remind me that I don't have to have it all figured out. And I feel like it's started to help ease some of the anxieties that I have around my own creative process, current creative schedule or constraints. It's just been a really wonderful, thought-provoking read, which is what I definitely hoped that it would be going into it, so I'm really glad that it's it's living up to the internal hype that I gave it. I think this will be it for this specific check-in, but I will definitely talk to you again before the end of this vlog. Hello again. I wanted to film some of my final thoughts for this vlog on Journal of a Solitude. I have not finished this book yet, however, I have sort of been slowly continuing to make my way through it really kind of trying to savor it. My previous thoughts on this book still stand. I'm really, really enjoying this book and it is really, it's been really helpful in lending me some insight into the mind and the life of someone who was a prolific writer in her time. Getting to see behind the curtain of the creator or the writer and one being able to see some level of similarity but also being able to see the imperfection and the struggle and having those realizations making it easier for my brain to sort of break down the mythos that sometimes comes with being a writer. Whereas a reader, you only sort of see what is put out into the world and getting to see sort of a larger picture of the person themselves. It's been really gratifying and inspiring and given me some level of assurance that I just need to keep pushing and moving myself forward as a writer. Before I close out this vlog, I wanted to share with you one of my favorite quotes from Journal of a Solitude thus far. My own belief is that one regards oneself, if one is a serious writer, as an instrument for experiencing. Life, all of it, flows through this instrument and is distilled through it into works of art. How one lives as a private person is intimately bound into the work, and at some point I believe one has to stop holding back for fear of alienating some imaginary reader or real relative or friend and come out with personal truth. If we are to understand the human condition and if we are to accept ourselves in all the complexity, self-doubt, extravagance of feeling, guilt, joy, and the slow freeing of the self to its full capacity for action and creation, both as human being and as artist, we have to know all that we can about each other and we have to be willing to go naked which oof, I just, I love. I feel like it's a quote that's emblematic of some of the insight that I'm getting from this book and some of, or something that I'm trying to sort of keep on the horizon line for my own writing journey, writing experience. But yeah, I think that is going to be it for this vlog. I hope you enjoyed it. I had fun filming it and talking about this book and reading it. If you did enjoy it, feel free to like this video. It helps my channel grow. Drop a comment down below. Let me know have you read Journal of Solitude? Does it sound interesting to you? Or just tell me what you're currently reading. I'd love to know. But I think that's going to be it for me for this video, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye!